Quit look, can you at least fight back? At least something. At least fight back, something. Get up, bro. Get up. Uh -uh. Yeah. So I'm like, let me extend my birthday and I'm going to go to this trip. Because I got asked to go on the trip in June, but I didn't reply because I didn't know what I was doing for my birthday since the next birthday was the next week after mine. So, um, where I was at? Oh, yes, I left on Saturday. Saturday. The trip was from Friday to Monday, October 28th, 29th, 30th. 31st going home. They didn't even make it there. So, I get off my flight around like 2.16, Mexico time, I guess we two hours ahead, 2.16 p.m. Um, I make a phone call. I make a phone call to everybody who there, like I need the address. I need the address, so when during this phone call, that's the first time I heard that Quilla wasn't feeling good. Um, they told me that Quilla was, was sick and she was showing signs of alcohol poisoning, and they got that because one of their friends told them that they were seeing signs so she was showing symptoms of alcohol poisoning. But I didn't know it was a fight. I, hold on. I got my Bible. And yeah, I'm going to put this blunt down. Because I'm not lying. I'm not going to lie on that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not saving nobody's ass. I'm not protecting my ass. I'm just coming here to keep it real. Because y'all and my DMs going crazy. And, and all this posting my address and stuff. Like, y'all can go there if y'all want. But it's not going to be crazy. Um, but when I got there... It took us an hour. My taxi driver, it took us an hour to get to the villa because it was traffic. I don't know why. So I got to the villa around 326. I instantly, as soon as I go in, I go to Quilla. Quilla didn't leave my side, my side, none of that, till um, the nurse came. But that's, I'm going, that's, I got too far ahead. So Quilla was laying on the couch in the game room. The fucking villa was... Like a big ass mansion, no upstairs, all tiled on the wall, tiled on the floor, straight tile, nothing, nothing else. So we just a big ass villa. I don't know if y'all can view it on the website. Go to Cabo Villas and look at how big this shit is and what it looked like. But well, you're going to see. So when I got there, she was in the game room. Um, they told me um, she was not feeling good. So I instantly go to her, um, put on her side, get a bag. And all that. So I'm sitting right next to her the whole time. I was across my heart. I hope that I, um, I was there the whole time in the game room. And then they was talking about cooking. So we made it to the living room. Um, I cut on some soft music, sitting with her, rubbing her head, just chilling, waiting until the nurse came. Because that's what I was informed that was happening. Um, at first, I was told that it was a male coming and then a female showed up. So um, by that time, well, no, I skipped another thing. Quilla wasn't found dead. She wasn't found dead. The maids found her slumped over the toilet in her room. That's what they did find her, slumped over her toilet in her room. That's what I was told. Quilla was not dead when I got there. Um, um, yeah, boom. So it's like, okay, so when I get in there, I go in, I see Quilla. I see she chilling, I put on her side. I go up and make that video while I'm talking about I'm here. That I quickly get up. I'm thinking like, damn, we got stuff to do. ATVs, a boat, dinner. I miss the chefs. I miss everything. Anyways, so, um, so I'm like, damn, I'm thinking, Quilla, let's get up. I say. Everybody that know me heard me say this shit. That was my first video when I got there. Or second, because I made a video of me pulling up to the villa. But he was cutting up the guy. I tried to get the timestamp for y'all, but that's not going to work. So I guess um, the real FBI or whatever had to put those right timelines together. But I'm going to start with the NCB. 
that faggot is so stupid and got y'all believing everything, everything that's wrong. I was not there till the next day. I didn't see a fight. I didn't know it was a fight. I didn't know it was a video. I didn't know they did any harm, anything. I went in there and told her it was alcohol poisoning, so that's what I helped her as. That's what I helped her as. I didn't leave her side. I cut on soft music. Summer Walker rubbing her head till the nurse came in. That, nobody even talked about the nurse. Nobody even said the nurse came None of this stuff, so I'm really not understanding where this story is coming from and why it's out here like this, because it's wrong. It's wrong. And for y'all to be attacking me, an innocent soul, like, it, I'm really innocent as fuck. I went there to enjoy my birthday. Like, to enjoy my birthday and to really just goddamn have fun. I didn't have not one second of fun. And take one shot and smoke one blunt and do anything. I went straight to Quilla. She was not found dead. She was found unresponsive. Yes, unresponsive. She was unresponsive. I tried to get her to talk to me and all that, but it was, it was, it was none of that. It was none of that going on. Um, oh, shit. Um, yeah, but other than that, I did. Oh, yeah, I know y'all probably asking that I, when I walked in there, I didn't, um, I didn't really notice the, the knot on her head until the nurse pointed it out. I did see the, the bump on her lip. Um, she had a, she did have a, a bug vessel bust in her eye. And, and that's it, but I didn't really go in there. Like, damn, y'all jumped her, y'all beat her ass, what's going on? Like, could they know? Man, and nobody even told me about nothing. I was blind to everything. I'm literally in there giving her my all. Like, come on, girl, we is 2,000 miles away from home. Took down the with my home. Don't nobody deserve this. Don't know. Damn, 50 more questions. Bro, why is y'all talking about the boys that y'all kill y'all friend? I wasn't there. I don't have those answers for you from Friday to 3 o'clock when I got to Cabo. I don't, I just don't have them answers. I posted my flight itinerary. I, when I got there, I, I can't make that up. I can't. I, I really don't know what else to do but show y'all um, fucking the real tickets if I can even find them when I land in the damn land. But I can post the video, I can show the video, it's going to show the timestamps because it's in my archive. I got there at 3 something p.m. I made my first video at 4.26. That's me outside by the pool. Da da da, San Quilla, get up, let's go, we got stuff to do. Let's go have fun. There was no fun in that. There was no fun in that. There was nothing good coming from that, man. I went in there, whipped my bag, put it down, went to the game room, went to the living room, stayed there. The worst time of my life. And now y'all on here trying to say I killed her. Me, the nigga that got there a day late. A day late. The nigga y'all didn't see in the video. I have a million and 30 tattoos. Do I sound like I was in that video? Go listen to it again. Do you hear my voice in that video? Like, come on, bro. Y'all niggas is really stupid. The bitches is stupid. The old ladies, all y'all are stupid. I don't care who's asking me because I have all my time stamps. I've been real close and cordial with everybody who really means something. So everybody else, this was just to give y'all some comfort. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not responding to nothing else. And all the death threats, I can go to some move. Everybody. I turn into a pack. All that shit y'all talking. Y'all just talking out y'all ass out of hurt because y'all listening to uh, social media. Social media, of course, my story is going to be different because I got there a day late. I can only tell you what I know from 3.30 to Sunday when I left. That's all I can do. I really can't give nobody no other answer from Friday because they didn't tell me. I didn't go in there, sit down and make no alibi with nobody. I didn't know nothing. They didn't tell me nothing. Cross my heart and hope to die on, on this Bible right here. I don't know nothing. I didn't sit and make no alibi. I didn't even have time. I got there an hour later. The nurse came in the door. The nurse came in the door. Try to help Quilla, try to put some salines in her, but she was, her energy, she didn't have no electrolytes, her oxygen was low, so she couldn't find them. Was, but y'all don't understand what I went through. Y'all don't understand, y'all won't understand. So y'all keep posting my address and all that shit, y'all have fun. Y'all have fun, y'all know y'all hurt me, y'all said, y'all not hurt me, I'm not bothered by this. Because I know the truth, me and God know the truth. Through the house, I talk to the on this internet and I cut the comments off because I know y'all being mad <laughs> they, they attacked her ma'am it wasn't no physical they attacked her ma'am I mean it seemed like from my daughter was asleep ma'am you know um, for all of them to be in that room and then you know 
they come in there like, I don't know, she woke up or whatever the way it seemed like they attacked her, man. And she naked, man. You know, for a father. To see that video, man, because my daughter's not a fighter, man. She's not a fighter. Not at all. For them to do what they did, man, it just seemed like it was a plot because they couldn't have did that over here, man. They couldn't have did over here. They couldn't have did that over here, you know, where her friends, all her friends are. You know, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't have went down like that, man. They don't realize, you know, what they done done, man. They took a hole. They took a hole. They, 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 they just robbed. They just put a hole in my heart, man. That was my only child. I'm just heartbroken, man. You know, I can't even be a granddaddy. Can't even walk down the aisle, man. Can't even hear a voice. Can't even hear say daddy. Mom, you know, can't even hear say daddy. Can't even hear say grandma. Damn, you know, y'all, I just don't know. Y'all just don't know what this has done to me. Just don't know, ma'am. You just, you just don't know. Just don't know. Just don't know. You know, I thought she'd be burying me. Not me burying her. What do you hope happens in this situation when it comes to getting justice for your girl? They get charged for it, ma'am. And they go back over there and do the time, because that's what they did the crime at. And they left for there, ma'am. They left her in that house, ma'am. They left her there for the maids to find her. Don't you know how much the pain my daughter suffered for the injuries, you know, that she took? You know, she was smaller, smaller frame, ma'am. You know, you know, for them to sit there. I ain't try to get her no help or nothing. I just want justice, man. I just, I'm, I'm just angry, hurt, sad, all in one, man. All in one. And I've been dealing with this from day one when I got the phone call saying that she had passed, man. You know. When you say when you say you want them to, of course you want them to be arrested and to serve, but life sentence would that is that what you think that they should face? Yes, it took a life, ma'am. It took a life. Some breaking news just into our newsroom within the past hour. We're learning that the Charlotte FBI field office has officially opened an investigation into the death of a woman on vacation in Cabo, Mexico, back in October. Now, Queen City News first brought you the story about uh, Shanquella Robinson's mysterious death last week. As anchor Morgan Francis reports, police investigating the case are sharing what they've discovered so far. Thursday, Mexican authorities told Queen City News Shinquella Robinson's friends lied to them about what happened to her prior to her untimely death on October 29th. An officer investigating the case says they interviewed two friends at the villa in Cabo who said Shinquella Robinson had alcohol poisoning. The same story her family says they told them. They said she wasn't feeling well. She had alcohol poisoning. They couldn't get a puss. It wasn't until her autopsy came back that Mexican police discovered she had a severe spinal cord injury and atlas luxation, which is instability in the uppermost vertebrae. They also didn't see this video showing Robinson get violently assaulted until Wednesday. For that reason, their investigation is still open and they're looking into her death. There's a huge financial incentive to keep Cabo open and to keep people feeling safe. So to the extent they can find, prosecute, incarcerate the people that did this, uh, in my opinion, they're going to try to do it. Kurt Kearns is an international attorney with experience litigating international crimes and investigations. Some of what he has to say might not be the most promising news. It's a sovereign state. So that's the first misunderstanding a lot of people have is that, hey, man, if I'm an American and I'm in trouble somewhere, boy, they'll come to my rescue. And the reality is not unless... There's a really big interest internationally in coming to your rescue because they will not upset international relations with a sovereign nation just to help out. The police officer investigating the case tells Queen City News if they find evidence that leads to an arrest, they have authority to bring the group back to Mexico and, quote, they will have to answer to Mexican law. While the FBI and U.S. State Department say it's not their jurisdiction, it doesn't mean they can't investigate either. Upon invitation, FBI can come in and assist upon, you know, invitation. The State Department can get more and more involved, but it's only upon invi invitation, i.e., do they want us there? 
That was Morgan Francis reporting. Police again are urging anyone with information to contact the local FBI office, and they will relay that information on to Mexican authorities. Right now, many in Charlotte and across the country are grieving the loss of Shanquella Robinson. Her mysterious death has now gained national attention. A 25 year old was found dead while vacationing in Mexico. And today, hundreds came out to say goodbye as she was laid to rest. WCNC Charlotte's Jesse Pierre was there for the services and shows us the outpouring of support for Robinson. She was a very humble spirit, very, just very sweet girl. Shanquella Robinson's coffin brought into the church by a horse-drawn carriage. Her celebration of life services bringing out hundreds of people. Loved ones wore pink in her honor. Danny Griffin, a family friend, says she'll always be remembered as a kind soul and daddy's little girl. Sometimes a daughter just don't do wrong in front of her father's eyes and everything, and, you know, she was the twinkle of his eye. Robinson's death remains a mystery after a trip with friends in Cabo last month, but her death captured the hearts of communities beyond the Queen City. It means a lot to see Charlotte supporting her and her family. I have a daughter. I have nieces. That child was amongst friends, and she should have been able to feel comfortable and feel safe. This shouldn't have happened. Robinson's neighbor and stylist, Lavara Smith, styled her hair for the trip and says he's heartbroken. She was just excited about going on her trip. And um, she sat in my chair, we just talked about a lot of personal stuff. Like we just clicked like she was like my little sister. Well-known activist Tamika D. Mallory says she stands in solidarity with the Robinsons. Losing a loved one in the heinous way in which has happened to Shanquella, there probably will never be peace for them, but there cannot just be an unopened situation. It has to be closed with truth, um, and it has to be that there is accountability for those who are responsible for her death. Griffin says this is a tough loss, and he is leaning to his faith. Everybody that have children, either it's a son, or a father or a daughter or anything, it make you want to just get down on your knees and pray for this family and then pray for the protection over your own children.